Hi, welcome to Talking Books and Stuff, the program that talks all about books and writing and stuff. Here's your host, Dennis Rimmer. Welcome back. Here we are. It's another edition of Talking Books and Writing and Stuff. And when we say books and writing and stuff, we mean and stuff. And by and stuff, uh, that includes cooking. We've had uh, cooks and cookbook people on before. We have another one right now. It's Felicia Fox. And uh, Felicia, I'm assuming you're from Saskatoon. Is that right? You assume correct, Dennis. Oh, good. You're in the Saskatoon area, but let's go way back. Where did you uh, first enter this world, and uh, where did you go to school, that kind of background stuff? Tell us about it. Sure. I, I was born and raised in Saskatoon. Um, you know, I, I grew up in uh, the Queen Elizabeth neighborhood, uh, down-home girl, you know. I went to Lacey Pool in the summertime, and... Um, went to Queen Elizabeth School and then Aidan Bowman and Walter Murray in high school. And uh, I ended up going to Calgary um, for broadcast school. So I went to state right. at, at the, yeah, the CTSR program there. And uh, I know you from television from a way back when. That's interesting because I went to BCIT for the same reason. Way back... Awesome. Before you were born, of course, but um, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, that's right. Sate, uh, uh, we know Betty from uh, CFQC um, went to Sate, and uh, lots of other people. In fact, way back when uh, I visited CFQC TV, Stan Thomas said, "Well, you can either go to school or you can go work in Swift Current." So I went to school. <laughs> so if, oh, perfect. if you want to get <laughs> yeah, into the business. I went to work in- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you came back from, was uh, back in Saskatoon your first uh, media job? Yes. Well, interestingly enough, right out of high school, I was an unemployed bum. So I, I ended up volunteering at Telecable 10. And so I was about 19 or 18 and a half, and I spent a year living, breathing uh, community television. And that's basically where um, I learned so much. They gave me free reign to do any kind of um, any kind of shows I wanted to do. So I ended up producing um, one of my biggest accomplishments there was producing a six six half hour shows on Saskatoon musicians and we called it Marmalade. It was so cool. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, as you know, um, Wifey Person was a longtime uh, record-holding uh, CFQC CTV employee here in the Saskatoon area. Uh, she's no longer in the business. Uh, you're no longer in the business, apparently. Um, but yeah. uh, we all have a sense that once a broadcaster, always a broadcaster. Do you have that feeling? I really do have that feeling. Uh, ever since I, I spent to that summer at Telecable 10 and then eventually going to SAFE in Calgary and, and then after I got back home, uh, um, I got a job at Global and then spent years and years at the FPC. I, like, it's my first love and my, probably one of my only loves because I love operations. I love video production. That's what I got into. Um, so, yes, I would have to agree with you, Dennis, that once a broadcaster, always a broadcaster. And now you're not. You're a cooker instead of a broadcaster. It's Felicia Fox, a food with Felicia Fox. So, what made the big change? What happened in your life that made you decide that uh, I'm not going anywhere with the television thing, mainly because everybody's been fired anyway. But <laughs> yeah. what you Obviously, you came to an end of the road, uh, maybe not by your choice, uh, with lots of layoffs, as we all know throughout the industry. So you had to make a, a career change or change your path. So what led you to what you're doing now? We'll get to what you're doing now in a moment, but... 
first of all, how did you get to where you are now? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question, Dennis. Um, it, it was, okay, so last June, I get laid off. Uh, and, and that's okay. Like, I could see it coming. I, it's a, it was a little bit sooner than I thought, but that's okay. Um, I always had a side gig in food anyway. So I had already had a trip but to Marseille, France. So um, like two days or something like that after I got laid off, I just hopped a plane to Marseille and, and just had a vacation. And during that trip, uh, I had some really good talks with some good friends and and you know i kind of was brainstorming about a project that that was always swimming around in my heart well maybe i gotta do this project that's always been there uh, for me and never had the time so now that i had the time i should just do it so when i got back from my vacation in the south of france i <laughs> i set up my dining room table uh because I always wanted to be um, like a, a, a cooker, right? I always wanted to do that. Like that was my second passion. So I thought, why don't I combine both my passions? And do, like in terms of video production and cooking. And so great. I set up my living room. It was awful, Dennis. <laughs> it, the production quality was just awful. But I didn't let that stop me because I knew that I, from doing it, I would just get better. And you just did it. Now you have Food with Felicia Fox. Is that right? Yeah, it's Food with Felicia Fox. It, 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 it's sort of an offshoot of my previous business called uh, Field Fox Gardens and Cookery, where I actually made pe pe people food. But now I, I just teach. So I create videos uh like video recipes and i teach people how to eat well at home and you also have cookbooks tell us about those yeah that's that's a dream come true uh, dennis i have to say it's always been a dream of mine to to document my favorite recipes but not in a traditional like hardcover cookbook kind of way so this is a magazine style, and it's huh. really awesome. So I just picked um, like a chicken for my first cookbook or cook magazine or whatever. I I, I uh, made just chicken recipes and everything that would kind of go along with chicken, just like I do at home. And I noticed that a while back you said you are so sick of chicken you never want to look at it again because <laughs> I think you, what, 28 recipes in 28 days, something like that? Yeah, yeah there's, so I test every single recipe so just to make sure it's actually good and the method's good and the instructions are really good, right? So people can follow it and just not have to worry about it. So yeah, there's some recipes that I made over and over again <laughs> just to make sure that the method was right. But yeah, I'm sick of chicken. But you know, at least my kids will eat it. <laughs> oh, that's good. So you have to cook, yeah. uh, obviously, for your family as well as yourself. And uh, you've decided that uh, there was something better food, better mood. Uh, did that come about gradually or was that like an overnight, uh, oh my gosh, a lightning bolt hit you and here we go? That was another good question, Dennis. That that actually happened. Um, like the realization, if a person eats better food, they have a better mood, was a realization a long time ago. So when I was a new parent, um, you know, 16 years ago or so, I started experimenting on my children, like all good parents do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so... When I, um, I wanted them to have a really, uh, to be supported in their life. So I thought, okay, I'm sure that what I'm feeding them is either good or not good. So I, you know, I was like a regular, normal person just going to the grocery store, buying all the crap. Yep. And then, you know, the kids would have, wouldn't be able to regulate their emotions so I started experimenting on them with nutrition 
And when I started feeding them whole food and better food, they were able to manage their emotions better. They were able to sleep better. Um, they didn't have emotional outbursts. Um, in general, their health was better. So I thought, oh, maybe I should try that on myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I started doing that and just cooking better at home um, with my family. And we, we got through a lot of things, a lot of challenges in a better way because I was feeding them whole food. And I thought, oh, okay, there's something here. So I did a little bit of uh, formal education um, and, and learned so much about that, about nutrition through the education. But then it's mostly from experimenting um, and learning what works for me is different actually than my daughter and different again with my son every single person needs something different for their body and this takes us to the next question or next phase is uh no processed foods right correct <laughs> correct <Yeah. laughs> uh, the processed food is poison it's it's and, no, and a lot of people don't realize that because maybe they're not aware. They trust, you know, government agencies or big, big food companies. <laughs> but really, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm serious. Some people just trust. Yep. And a person really shouldn't. You know, they should really, really listen to their bodies. Okay, why am I, like, you know, you got to ask questions like, why am I gaining weight? Or why can't I sleep? Or why do I have eczema? You know, um, mm -hmm. okay, what what do I feel like when I eat white white bread from the grocery store right. versus um, how do I feel when I make bread at home? You know, just really, so, so here's another thing that I'm really big on is sit with yourself for 15 minutes and just ask yourself, ask your body, body, what do you need right now? Oh, do you need to drink a big jug of water? Yeah, do it. Uh, stuff like that. Really ask your body, what do you need? And then be prepared to listen and act on it. Well, I can understand why, excuse me while I cough, <coughs> cough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We were watching the news the other night, just as an aside, and a poor guy from Regina had a coughing fit on air. Oh, my God, the poor guy. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> but, it happens. People cough. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I said to myself, doesn't he have a cough switch? Oh, well. Anyway, we're talking yeah. about process. I can understand today's day and age compared to when I was growing up and Diane was growing up that uh, we hardly ever had a bag of potato chips in the house. If we did, it was a big treat, and you got handed out three of them at a time, and that was it. And yeah. we walked to school and all that kind of stuff. That's different. But people nowadays, and I don't blame it at all, it's far easier when you have three kids in the back seat. Two of them have to go to hockey practice. One has a piano practice. The If they're indeed a couple, the one of them is working shift work, so it's just so easier to pull through the drive-through and get the this and that and the other thing and take it home. But... As I've found, though, natural foods, whole, it's much cheaper, believe it or not, to go to the, even the grocery store and buy veg. You can buy a cartload of vegetables for half the price as, of a cartload of processed foods. Do you find that? I absolutely do find that, yes. And and I do understand the, the pressure that parents are on uh, in terms of, you know, all of the school and the activities and working shift work. And I, I live it. And that's why I developed all of the things that I've developed for my own family, and that's why I want to share it. It just takes literally 15 minutes a week to really intentionally build your pantry so you can um, um, be prepared enough to eat healthy and still do all of the things that you need to do. And if you do that, you'll have more energy and more patience and you'll have more fun because your mood is better. Like you, know? like you said, better food, better mood. Absolutely. I'm looking through a newspaper today. Believe it or not, they're still around in some places. Um, yeah. A lead line was Saskatchewan residents ready to eat sustainably. 
Your thoughts on that? Oh, that's great. I think that there are movements in little pockets throughout the province, throughout the world, uh, throughout the city, where people are getting back to traditional ways of, of creating meals for themselves. I, I know we have a long way to go, but yes, I'm involved with different groups of people that really believe that um, that traditional food, tra- traditional methods of of um, creating meals is actually um, the way to go. And yes, okay, not everybody can raise cattle no. <laughs> or milk a cow or whatever, but there's a bridge. To uh, city people, to the country folk, there's all kinds of bridges, and it just takes intention. It just takes a little bit of intent to. F- there's so many around Saskatchewan, so many uh, makers. It's easy to find somebody that can supply you with better food. Um, one of the Facebook pages you have describes you as your culinary guide to delicious wellness. Uh, what does that mean to you, and what can we expect from that slogan? Oh, yeah. So the recipes that I share or that I um, have in my cook magazine and also through my newsletter service is they're simple recipes with accessible ingredients. And um, and then I, and I am available for hire to help you in your own home, go through your pantry and make things very organized. So you have a well-stocked pantry, a well-stocked freezer. So on your busier days, you can whip up a meal within 20 minutes, like a nutritious meal within 20 minutes. Even if you are on your way to hockey, um, it's, it's, you know, it's easy to make a nutritious sandwich than to go through McDonald's or Timmy's. So it's just, just practicing organizing your pantry and your and your freezer and with my guidance um, a person can do this so easily like it's so easy to be organized that way Felicia Fox is with us a couple more questions uh, you're also involved a lot in community groups uh, maybe you can give us a little rundown on, on that aspect of your your day-to-day life absolutely I'm involved with uh, three off the top of my head at the moment. So I'm a member of Slow Food, and Slow Food is an international organization. It talks a lot about traditional food, traditional methods, um, and preserving those traditional foods and methods. And we have a small chapter in Saskatchewan, and I encourage anyone to reach out to the, the, the Saskatchewan chapter and become a member. Um, we have uh, events twice a year uh, and it's to fundraise and to spread the, the slow food message. I'm also a volunteer for the Riversdale Community Fridge and they're always looking for volunteers or donation, financial donations and that provides uh, ready, ready-made food, uh, and just I deliver it to the to the Riversdale Community Fridge, which is in the parking lot of Comfy, and just off of 20th Street there. So I deliver to that, um, and also I'm involved with CHEP. CHEP um, is the acronym for a Childhood Hunger and Education Program. So I work a lot with their programs, teaching. Um, I give um, cooking classes and just teach people how to make good food with accessible ingredients. So uh, what's on your dinner menu for tonight? Well, I was just away for a week, uh, a hockey tournament in Alberta. So I have absolutely like nothing (laughs) in the in the in the house right now. So after we're done talking, I'm going to pick up a few groceries, but my son he wants me to perfect a pizza that sometimes they they get uh as a team from uh panago or whatever and it's the um ranch 
it, it has instead of a tomato sauce, it has ranch, chicken, and bacon. So I'm going to try to perfect that uh, method, just so you know they don't go out to order all the time. I can just make it for them at home. Right. But I also have a loaf of bread going, and I'm going to my mom who lives in a senior care home. She has requested uh, me to bring her a meal. Uh, so t- for tomorrow, I'm going to make her a pan-fried trout filet with um, steamed um, Brussels sprouts with, uh, and then sautéed in bacon grease, and then um, mashed sweet potato with some um, maple syrup mixed in there. So, so those are some of the things that I'm going to be making in the next 24 hours. Sounds great. Uh, again, yeah. about, you've got the your magazine now how actually can you run us through how you actually produced this like did you do it yourself do you have desktop publishing how did you do it i have a wonderful lady that helps me with the design aspect so i i type out all of the the recipes and the methods and in the order that i want uh, the cookbook to flow and then she gets on canva and she designs the pages and then i she sends me the file, the entire file, and then I uploaded it to a website called mixem.ca, and I just plunked the file in there and did a couple little adjustments. And then, so this this publisher is in Toronto somewhere, and then they just sent it to a box of magazines to me, and it was so easy, so awesome, and they came out so good. There's such a it's such a pretty magazine. That's great. Okay, now, before we wrap it up, how do we access uh, Food with Felicia Fox and all your other uh, various endeavors? What's the best way to get in touch with you? The best way is to go to my website, foodwithfeliciafox.com, and you can see all of my offerings there. I offer three levels of um, interaction, from newsletters to in-person um like instructions um you can sign up for my newsletter there and and there will be a link to purchase my my cooking magazine and also you can find me on all the social media platforms i have a bunch of free videos on youtube so it's just food with felicia fox on youtube there we go food with felicia fox and uh You'll have no trouble accessing all of these uh, wonderful hints, tips, suggestions, and recipes from Felicia Fox. And we thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Dennis, for inviting me on your show. I appreciate it. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. Contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at amazon.ca. Oh, oh.